Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Precious My Level back with another video. And as you can see by the title, today I'm going to be talking about how I studied tax in university and how I successfully past tax specifically in cta so if this is something you're interested in continue watching don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe <laughs> The first thing that I did was definitely to stay up to date um, with lectures. Um, this was basically not letting lectures, okay, I mean, it was back in the time of COVID, so that was basically not letting lectures pile up too much. I would make sure that I had like, I was in the right week, like let's say for example, if lecture one was released, I am watching lecture one within week one most i would watch it in week two but i would not let it go into me watching lecture one's video in week three of the program for example so i would make sure that i was completely up to date um, at most a week behind and nothing more so obviously i know now um, physical lessons and physical lectures are back in full swing so it's a bit different with that so now it would probably be um, making sure that I don't miss lectures so that I'm always attending the tax lectures um, and not missing um, any lectures then the second thing that I did was to take extensive notes during my lectures so whatever the lecturer said I would write it down and the reason for this was I wanted to be so engaged in what the lecturer was saying also I wanted to incorporate this into part of my studying so what I mean by that is I didn't want to now go home and now have to study what the lecturer had said or study through the, the lecture notes because I wasn't, for example, paying attention. So while the lecturer was talking, I would take extensive notes. If I noticed something didn't make sense to me, I would make a clear note of that and I would clarify that. Um, after making these extensive notes, I would go home and I would compare the notes that the lecturer said to the study module. So um, basically the course material. So let's say for example, let's use VAT as an example. If the lecturer was making reference to VAT in his lectures and we are on the VAT lecture or on the VAT section, um, during my studying, I would compare it to the VAT notes that were provided by my university or institution or whoever you're studying through. And I would actually compare um, what notes I took during the lecture to those notes, to those VAT notes that were provided to me. And then I would be able to identify any differences, say that the lecturer didn't touch on during the lecture, but are mentioned in the module. I would be able to touch on those and um, polish that up. But also if there was any sections within the module that wasn't clear to me but was explained beautifully in the lecture then i would let's say for example edit the um, module notes and make a note of a different perspective or different way or wording that the lecturer explained during the lecture so that was really nice to sit and consolidate the information it made sure that i was really not missing anything I made sure that I, because you know when you leave a lecture and you have that feeling of, oh, did I miss something or did I miss important information or you're studying a week's work and you're just like, I feel like I'm missing something and then you have the constant urge to want to go back to your study notes. I feel like staying attentive, keeping attentive during your lectures and also reconciling what the lecture notes say to what the module notes say really helps you be sure of yourself that you know what, you know what was lectured, you know what was said, you know what the notes say, and then you can move on to different other study techniques. Let's go to scope and implication. So basically, um, I came across a lecturer 
who really explain the concept of dividing your notes into scope and implication. And this will help when you come to the active recall part of studying tax. So scope and implication basically means that you divide your notes into what is the scope of the section, what is the implication of the section. For example, if let's say you were studying, let's use the gross income one. I feel like everybody knows that one. So let's use the gross income as an example. So your scope in terms of gross income would be total amounts in cash or otherwise accrued by or received by a person in the year of assessment excluding amounts of a capital nature then you're going to also write the implication so what is the implication we're using gross income as an example the implication is that that amount would be gross income in nature and included in your taxable income so that was basically the approach when it came to scope and implication and i would do it for all of my sections so you name it from VAT all the way to the very very in any section that is from the VAT Act um, I would do what is the scope what is the implication even the most simplest ones like your allowances and inclusions what is the scope what is the implication so I would do this for every single section and I would actually write it on a piece of paper so while I'm studying so in the lecture I would take extensive notes then I would get home and I would reconcile what's in my notes from my lecture to the material that they gave us for that section to see if anything is missing that wasn't discussed in the lecture that I need to touch on myself or to add more information to what is in my module or study material that will help me gain more of an understanding then I would write out what is the scope, what is the implication for each of those items that are in my notes as well as my module because obviously it won't be in that format. So then I would have like a little booklet which would have um, scope implication for all of the notes. So the, this little booklet is what I would study from, right? So for each section, what is the scope, what is the implication? So I would go through that, I would learn it off by heart so now we get to the active recall part of it um, I would learn it off by heart for example what is the scope of gross income I would make sure total uh, total amount in cash or otherwise received by a crew to a person in a year of assessment excluding an amount of a capital nature I would make sure that I knew that off by heart and then what are my implications the implication is that it is included in gross income now you might be wondering, okay, I do not have time for that. Why is that even important that I learn it off by heart? But for me personally, and a lot of people actually that I've spoken to about studying tax, including some lecturers, knowing it off by heart and actually practicing active recall when it comes to tax helps you to identify the triggers in the exams because a lot of the times you can go right past a trigger and you have no idea like you can be reading the course information and then there's a trigger and you go right past it and you have no idea it is even a trigger so what would help you identify the trigger and know that this is triggering something that you need to account for in your un in your answering um, account for that you need to um, make reference to an answer in your in your question and answers um, is knowing it off by heart so you can see as soon as you see cash or accrued to paid to accrued to in the year of assessment not of a capital nature or you can see that the amount is not a capital nature then you're like oh there's my trigger this amount is gross income or this amount is not gross income. So I would be discussing that part of my material. So, um, yeah, no, this, I won't even lie, was very tedious. It was such a tedious process, but every single time I thanked myself for it. And I think the trick here was also making sure, like, let's say the week, the first week that I went to the lecture, I would already as fast as possible, try to jump into splitting it into scope and implication so that I can have time to really know the work and know it off by heart so that um, come closer to the exam, I don't have like a whole pile of work. So I would actually incorporate it into my studying that week in which the lectures, the lectures were released. So the final step in my studying for tax was basically now to write out all my questions. So I would write out questions based on that little study packet that I was using to study. So I would write out the questions, for example, um, 
reached, what is the scope of gross income? What is the implication of gross income? What is the scope of, I forgot the section, section 24J, for example. What is the implication of section 24J? What is the scope of section 13.6? What is the implication of section 13.6? So that would be on like my word page and this page would only have questions. So from top to bottom, I only have questions. What would help me that I added was now and again, I would add um, what is the scope of gross income? And then I would put in brackets six points. That Therefore, I know that I need to remember six things or the gross income has six things in its scope that I need to remember. That's the only hint I gave myself. But all of those things would be in a list, um, on a Word document with no answers. So <clears throat> this becomes extremely frustrating when you're actually going through the active recall and practicing and trying to answer the questions that you've written for yourself on this word document because some of the things you might forget and it gets really exhausting when you need to go and look for answers but this is more motivation that you need to know this thing off by heart so imagine for the whole year you're going back to look for the same answer um, so what you do when you're trying to find something and you do find it, you make sure that you learn it and you know it off by heart so that you don't have to come back to now look for the answer um, again. Also, having the answer on your question page kind of makes your brain lazy because you know the answer is there, so you're not really trying to retrieve the answer from your mind, which is what active recall is. Um, you're basically trying to recall. This is proven to be one of the best study methods because it's the most active. You're really applying yourself and you're really trying to recall information from your brain by itself. So you have um, higher chances of remembering this information long term and honestly it's worked amazing for me my marks for tax really shot up um, after I was really like properly incorporating active recall as much as it's a lot of admin um, doing it every single week consistently helped so knowing, okay, I'm studying tax this week. This is what I have to study from it. This is the steps that I need to do. Attend the lecture and take a lot of notes. Um, reconcile my lecture notes to my course material. Write out scope and implication for all my sections. And then write out questions on a Word document that are basically making reference to my little study pack that I wrote out with scope and implication. And those questions are the things that I need to know the answer to. Before the end of the week, I would go through all the questions, attempt to answer them, and really have an indication of some things that I understand, other things that I don't understand, and other things that I like, I know nothing of. So what I would do is I would highlight in different colors, things that I was really comfortable with, I would highlight in green, things that I was shaky with, for example, I would highlight in orange, and then things that like, zero knowledge i would highlight in red so that um when i now revised it not too close to the exam but like let's say for example you would need you would need to go through your questions as many times as possible before the exam so you would need to forget the answers to these questions you would need to retrieve them and um be able to answer it so maybe forgetting twice and retrieving quite a few times before the exam was necessary because the whole process of forgetting and retrieving is what makes the information go into your long-term memory so i made sure that i went through those questions and attempted to answer those questions several times before my exam and my revision before my exam. So um, what is the scope? What is the implication? The first time, obviously, I'm gonna have a lot of red highlights or a lot of orange highlights and a few green ones. Um, then I'll go through it another time, maybe after a week, go through those questions. Um, what is the scope? What is the implication? Or whatever your questions are asking you. And then maybe some things will move from red to orange because you kind of remember it, but not great as well. And then maybe a third time before your exam, um, what is the scope? What is the 
implication and then you'll get a whole lot of things that are now highlighted in green which is the stuff that you know and then come your exam you'll be able to answer the things like this because you've given your mind the opportunity to store this in your long-term memory so that is how i studied tax you guys um i hope i'm not forgetting anything and what was really nice about this method is because i had studied everything throughout the year come the end of the year um i would literally just take the question pages from each section and go through them and ask and answer those questions answer those questions um the ones that i really struggled with i did make an attempt to go through them more which was for example sticking the question on my mirror or what I did a lot of times was set an alarm on my phone so I would have a list of questions that just didn't want to stick for some reason and then let's say for example five o'clock in the afternoon I would set an alarm go through tax active recall questions and those were the questions in red that just didn't want to get out of the red zone and I would ask myself them and answer them. Next day, again, five o'clock, let's go through it again. What's the question? Scope, implication. Next day, again, scope, implication. So I'd probably do this for like a week. And then, um, yeah, then closer to the exam, I found that those things really stuck with me. Yeah, that's how I studied tax, you guys. Um, obviously, there's also focusing on the exam technique, which is a conversation for another day but that is essentially how I approached the week-to-week -week workload of tax and it worked absolutely amazing for me. I really recommend that you use the same approach or if not exactly the same, you really incorporate active recall into your studying routine. As tedious as it feels in the moment, I really found it super rewarding especially when you're in the exam and you're remembering everything and you're just on a roll and it just feels so amazing to see your hard work and your sweat uh pay off so try it let me know how it goes thank you so much for watching you guys don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and oh yeah before i go i finally hit 1000 subscribers thank you to each and every person that has subscribed to my channel until my next video you guys bye